Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. I'm Intan Zaurah Madaros from University Technology Malaysia and this class is known as Adaptive Control and Intelligence System. It's actually a part of my master class in University Technology Malaysia. When you have a system that is continuously changing in its parameter, then you need to utilize adaptive control. In this session, I would like to show you what happens when you use a poll assignment method for adaptive control of a system that is actually changing in its parameter. Let's have a look at a very simple system, for example, a system parameter, uh, a system transformation by ARX model, B over A, a polynomial B over A. Uh, the input is U and the output is Y. This, is, this system is actually in time domain, so we need to actually uh, sample it so that we can convert the data from continuous data into a discrete data. So we can use zero or the whole here and with a sampling time uh, t, for example, t equals to 1 plus t1z minus 1, then we can actually sample this uh, and have the data convert from time domain to zero or the whole or discrete domain. Right, let's say it's a first order system. You, As we already know, parameter of a, a first order system, for example, a, b, and also the, uh, the time constant t here is actually affecting the transient behavior of the system, also the speed of the response and the stability of the system. Therefore, we need to design a controller that can actually uh, handle this problem. So if we design a simple controller, for example, use a feedback control system to alter the speed of the response, yes, we can do that, all right? So for example, we want the input to be, uh, the input is a step input, and let's say the original, open loop of the system is the blue dotted line that we have here and when the input is actually um, when the uh, system is actually responding and you can see at the transient uh, behavior it is very slow and at the steady state the system is having steady state error then you know that the system need to have a controller to overcome this steady state error and if we simply close the loop and we can apply a simple parameter for example PID controller uh, we can actually eliminate the error at the steady state and we can also uh, perhaps improve the, the response of the system. However, what happens is uh, this is only working if your system does not change in parameter. Okay, So if your system continuously or uh, keep changing in its parameter, then when you design the controller, the controller also has to be able have to have the ability to update its uh, transfer function, its parameter, so that it can overcome the uh, new um, uh, new system uh, parameter changes in your system. Okay, so uh, for example, when the parameter of the system change, the poles uh, of the system is also changing. So we need to actually design a controller to adapt it by uh, maybe assigning a pole, a specific pole to the system. Uh, so that it is in uh, reference to the parameter of the system. Therefore, if any parameter changes, the pole, uh, the stability of the system can be assured. And also, we can design a controller so that the response of your system is always correspond to the reference of your system. So, when your system is changing in parameter, the controller should also change so that it can still overcome the problem of a steady state error. So how to do that? Let's propose a simple controller structure. For example, in this case, I'm going to put a controller of H node in the uh, fit forward of my uh, system. And then I'm going to put a controller of G node uh, in the feedback of my system. The system transfer function is still the same. Well, what we have here is B Z minus one over one minus A Z minus one. Okay, so this is the ARX model that we have earlier. Okay, let's say I would like to design this controller and I would like to have my um, controller to be H node and G node. Okay, therefore when we uh, add these two controllers into the system, what happens is that the closed loop system equation will change. From the beginning, it was just B over A or B Z minus 1 over 1 minus A Z minus 1. Now the closed loop system equation have changes. Okay, let's have a look uh, how does it change. Okay. So if you look here, um, your input is now equals to ut is equals to negative g naught y plus 
H node R T. Okay, so how is that? So you look at if you look at the system just now. I can I can show you the system again. This is R node with H node, or maybe just okay. And then we have our system here. Now your U is here, right? Before your trans function. And then you have your controller G here. Okay, with a negative uh, feedback there, right? So U is actually uh, R multiplied by H. Minus y multiplied by g note. Okay. Or I can just change that into what we have uh, in the slide. U is equals to negative y g note plus r h note. Okay. So then what happens is that uh, the closed loop system equation is referring to your closed loop transfer function which is I can write in terms of y y is equals to um, u multiplied by b z minus 1 over 1 minus a z minus 1 okay and knowing that u is equals to this equation here we can substitute that into your closed loop system equation then when you're gonna then what you're gonna get is y is equals to b z minus one over one minus a z minus one multiply by this value that we have here which is minus y g note plus r h note okay so if I can expand that what I'm gonna get is that y is equals to negative b with y g node z minus 1 over 1 minus a z minus 1 and i have another one is plus r b h node z minus 1 over 1 plus a z minus 1 right so then if we collect the y together because we have y in the both sides so we're going to collect the y together so i will have y is now equals to a 1 plus b g node z minus 1 over 1 minus a z minus 1 is equals to r b h node z minus 1 over 1 minus a z minus 1 okay so then when we uh, have that i can just expand this again now it become y 1 minus a z minus 1 plus b g naught z minus 1 divide by 1 minus a z minus 1 and on the other side it will become uh, uh, similar as before y um sorry r b h node z minus 1 over 1 minus a z minus 1 okay so when we have that what we can do is then we can uh, bring this uh, coefficient of y to the other side of uh, the equations and then we're going to leave it uh, the the uh, this one side as just uh, as y okay so we're going to have y is equals to let me just put b h z minus 1 and I will have the r on the other side here, okay? Divide by uh, 1 minus a z minus 1 plus b g node z minus 1. Of course, the 1 minus a z minus 1 will cancel uh, from each other from this side here, isn't it? Okay? So, uh, that is uh, becoming what we have here. This is similar to the equation that I have. I'm just going to factorize the bottom part there becoming y equals to b h node z minus 1 over um, we can factorize it by having 1 
minus okay so that minus sign here in this side it become az minus 1 uh, and that minus will become that plus become minus b g note um, and all of them is actually multiplied with z minus 1 you can have that factorized by that okay so now it is actually similar to the one that we have in the slide okay so when we have this equation uh, if you remember from the steady state error and also from the stability okay so if you look at the stability of a system what we want to do is that we want to look at the denominator of the closed loop transfer function so the denominator of your closed loop transfer function which is also known as the characteristic equation is actually the one who determine if your system is uh, stable or unstable okay so let's have a look at that value there okay from your characteristic equation that is 1 minus a minus b g note with z minus 1 equate with 0 okay so if you find the value of z that will actually give you the value of your poles in z domain okay so that will be um, a minus b g note okay so if I bring that uh, 1 and bring that to the other side, so this is becoming that minus, uh, multiplied by Z minus 1. Of course, you, uh, Z minus 1 is actually 1 over Z. Okay, so we're going to substitute that into the equation. So we're going to have Z is equals to A minus B G naught. So this is the poles of your, uh, sorry, this is your uh yeah, it's your poles of your system, okay? So, it's the poles of your system. Uh, it's a closed-loop pole. So, this is the one who actually will determine if your system is stable or not. For Z, uh, in Z domain, for a system to be stable, the value of Z must be less than 1. If the value of Z is more than 1, so the system become unstable. So, if we plot uh, Z in Z domain, so the stability is indicated with unit circle so the value of one so anything inside the unit circle will be a stable system okay so anything outside the unit circle is unstable system all right so uh, so if you have z is equals to for example z is equals to 0 0.75 this system will be a stable system if z for example uh, equals to 1.2 this is unstable system, all right? So, this is for zero or the whole. Okay, so having to say that, we then need to actually um, design a system. Of course, we want to design the system so that the system remains stable. Therefore, for pole assignment, it is actually, we are fixing the value of our pole so that it is always a stable system, even though the parameter of our system changing all the time. So, when we fix the value of poles to be, for example, uh, 0 0.75, we know that the system is always stable. So how to do that? We can just simply say that the zero, the, the z is equals to T1 and it is equals to the equation that we have earlier, okay, which is A minus B G naught, right? So if I have that, then I can uh, rewrite this equation in terms of G naught. So I will have a minus B G naught is equals to T1. So A is equals to, um, sorry, B, B, B G naught is equals to A minus T1. Therefore, G naught is equals to A minus T1 over B. Okay. Uh, let me just write that as subscript. Okay, so it means to say this is our uh, design rules, all right? The design rules is that we want to uh, fix the value of poles, uh, which is T1. We want to fix it at a, fa uh, at a fixed value of, for example, 0 0.75 or 0 0.5 or whatever it is. It must be less than 1. Okay, so if whatever value of our parameter, so as I mentioned just now, Adaptive control is applicable when a system parameter always changes. In this case, the parameter of our system is A and B. So every time the value of A and B, we can actually determine the changes 
and then our controller will immediately update itself according to this design rules number one okay so it will always update itself and the system is always having a stable pulse right the, based on the value of pulse that we have decided earlier okay so this is the design rules number one okay for the design rules number two it is simply because we want our system to be having steady state error zero at all the time so what does it mean by having steady state error of zero is we want our output response y is always equivalent to our reference input so you have your y um let's say it's a ref our our signal is uh, our output is y it is always equals to r so it means to say at steady state our response must be equivalent to the input supplied to the system so the response must be having steady state error zero when the value of your output r is equals to the value of your input r okay so how to do that we can look back at the transfer function of our uh, system just now the closed loop transfer function of our system y is equals to b h z minus one over one minus a minus b g note uh, z minus one okay and then we uh, that is actually multiplied with the value of r okay so if y is equivalent to r then we if we bring that y uh, r uh, to the other side of r we're gonna have y over r equals to b h z z minus one over one minus a minus b g naught i have to put that outside the bracket okay so that is equivalent to one why because we want the input and output to be the same y over r if it's similar then y over r will become one okay if it's the same right okay so when do we want to do that we want to find out the steady state error at a steady uh, normally as i mentioned in the previous class steady state error we evaluate that when t is approaching infinity or s is approaching zero okay so for z or the whole it is actually happened during uh, when z is equivalent to one okay so we want to do that so this is uh, happening when for example if it's in time domain t when t is approaching infinity or if you talk about in s domain okay when you are talk when you are finding the steady state error of your system it is happening when s is equals to zero or when you talk about z it is when z is approaching value of one so that is when you want to measure your steady state error okay so if i put the value of z equals to one into my equation here what i'm going to get is that y over r is equals to just b h with z minus one uh, is now becoming one okay over one minus a minus b g naught also when i have that z minus one is equals to one so this is all of them is equivalent to one okay so from there we can then rewrite in terms of h naught because we do not know what is the value of controller to be given to the system in h naught okay so we need to actually find out what is the value of h naught so if i rewrite this equation i will have b is equals to uh, sorry b h is equals to i can bring this uh, to the other side so it become one minus a minus b g note okay and that h note is equals to one minus a minus b g note divided by b okay so that is your value of your uh, controller h note so if you uh, utilize this um, uh, using this derivation you can see that the value of your h note will always ensure the system is having your um, reference signal uh, your system output will be uh, always equivalent to your reference signal r okay so at the same time you are ensuring your system is stable for uh, using your design rules number one for design rules number two you are ensuring that your steady state error is zero at all the time okay so if you look at the value of h note here 
the H naught is actually as a function of A and B. What is A and B? A and B again is actually the parameter of your system. So that is why in adaptive control, when parameter of your system is actually changing, when you design this kind of controller, your controller also will update itself no matter whatever your, uh, how many times your transfer function, your parameter of system A and B changes, your controller will always update itself so that the parameter of your controller H node and G node also changing uh, with uh, the changes of your parameter of system. Okay, so that is why we can write H node as a function of A and B. Okay, so this is your design rules number two. All right, so when we um, what what when we have this kind of system, the idea is that we want to shift the system to a set of uh, stable poles. At the same time, we want to ensure the stability of the system. We want also to uh, to ensure the system is having steady state error, uh, uh, zero steady state error. So, in summary, pole assignment is what we do is actually uh, we are shifting the open loop poles to a desired uh, closed loop poles and then we set the desired closed loop poles so that the system is always a stable system. We can also determine the desired poles by uh, find out what is the transient response that we want, what is the frequency shape that we like and if the system is uh, should be remain stable of course. Okay, So based on this set of uh, desired poles, we then design our controller according to the design rules number one that we have earlier. And then we are utilizing the steady state error to make sure the steady state error is zero. We are utilizing the design uh, rules number two that we have just now. Let me show you an example of this kind of problem. Okay, let's say we have a system with a transfer function y over r. Let's say the transfer function of uh, 10 z minus 1 over 1, plus, 1 minus uh, 5 z minus 1. So therefore from here I know that b value is equals to 10 then the a is actually equals to 5. Okay. So if I want to design the controller like what we have just now okay so and the closed loop during the closed loop we have another controller which is our g node right so we can actually um find out what is the pulse that we like okay or we can find out what is the pole of the system and then check if it's stable or not or we can just simply set I want the pole to be certain value and that value is a stable pole. Okay, for example, I can just say that I want the pole of the system to be 0 0.5. It's a stable pole, isn't it? If it's less than 1, then the system is always stable, isn't it? So I want the value of our poles. Okay, let's say we fix the value of pole at T1 is equals to 0 0.5. All right, so this is the value of poles that we like. Okay, so we can then, uh, and of course, not only we want the system to be stable, we want the system to have steady state error of zero. So the first design rules is actually to ensure stability. Okay, so for a stable, if you look again at the design rules number one. Okay, so your G note value should be, uh, G note should be uh, just A minus T1 over B. Okay, and then in this case, you just simply put the value of your A, which is 10, minus your T1, which is 0 0.5, divide by the value of your B. Oh, sorry, A is not 10. A is 5, isn't it? Okay, the value of A is 5. Okay, minus 0 .5, uh, 5 minus 0 0.5, which is the value of your poles. And then B is the value of your uh, parameter B just now is 10. Okay, so from there you can just have 5 minus 0 0.5 which is 4.5, 4.5 divided by 10 it's 0 0.45. So this is the value of your transfer function, uh, a controller G node that you have on your feedback just now. Okay, so this is for design rules number one. Okay, what about design rules number two? 
Design rules number two is to ensure that your system is always stable. So I have this now. Y over R must be equals to one, isn't it? To ensure stability of the system, uh, to ensure the steady state error of the system is uh, always um, zero. Okay. So from there, I have my design rules number two. H node is equals to one minus A minus B G node. Okay. Divided by the value of B. So if you substitute all the value, you're going to have 1 minus A. A is equals to 5 minus B. B is equals to 10. 10 multiplied by your G note. G note is 0 0.45. Okay. So then the whole lot is divided again by the value of B, which is 10. So what do we have there? I have 1 minus um, 10 multiplied by 0 0.45 is 4.5. 5 minus 0. Point, uh, 5 minus 4.5 is 0. 0.5. 1 minus 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.5. So 1 minus 0. 0.5 over 10. Okay. So what do we have there? We have 0. 0.5 divided by 10. So it becomes 0. 0.05. So this is the value of your H node. This from your design rules number two. So if I put that in my control system here. All right, the value of H node and G node, then I know that the system, no matter uh, uh, the system is always uh, stable and the system is always having steady state error of zero. Okay, so if I put in a loop, I'll make sure that the loop will have my value of controller red, my controller red based on A and B. Why? Because when I have uh, the value of A and B changing, okay, I can determine the value of A and B. Uh, every time it's changing, I can determine it using least squared or recursive least squared. And I will get the new value of A and B every time it change. Okay. And then I will update my value of controller immediately within the same loop when I actually determine the value of changes in the parameter of my system. So by doing this, I can ensure that the system is always stable and the steady state error is always zero. As conclusion to this poll assignment, uh, derivation of poll assignment method, there are two design rules. The first design rules, as you can see in this slide, is uh, to ensure that the system is always remain stable. We will assign the value of a stable poles to the system and then whatever the parameter of the system changes, whenever it changes, the value of your controller will be uh, updated and then the system will always remain stable. Number two, the design rules number two is to ensure that the stability of your, uh, the steady state error of your system is always zero. So no matter how many times your transfer function changes, the parameter of your system changes, the value of B and A, as you can see, if it changes, your controller will always update its value according to these changes. So these two design rules is actually what we have for poll assignment. So I will actually uh, continue this class later on to talk about poll assignment with regulators.